Hello everyone. Today we have a problem here. We have input of various length here. We want to pad it with needing zeros into a fixed length of five, for example. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it with formula, and I'm going to show you with five different approaches. Okay, let's go to the first approach. It's using the function text. Okay, this function is super straightforward. The first argument is the value that we want, and then we need to input the format text into a string. So we have the double quote here. What I want is a fixed length of five with leading zero. So what I need to do is just to input five zeros in a test string here. Okay, as simple as that. Copy it down. And um, you see that it works only for values or uh, number store as test. It doesn't work if we have letter in our input. So for sure, we need another approach. Before I go to another approaches, I want to show you a trick. We can make this format test a more dynamic. We can use the function repeat, L-E-P-T. OK, what do we want to repeat? I want to repeat the test string zeroed. Second parameter is how many times I want it to repeat this. So I can actually input that in a cell reference here, which is H1. So let me press F4 to make it optional. And then just need to close parentheses here, enter. In this way, this formula works well for all numbers or number stores test. And now it is dynamic to the input here. Let me change it to seven, for example. See, this is dynamic, but again, no good if we have certain tests here. It works only when we are doing with numbers or numbers stores test only. The second approach is using master formula. Maybe this is a commonly used approach, but not necessarily the best one. I will show you why this is not the best one. So in order to construct the if formula here, the first logical test we want to see would be to determine the length of the test we are dealing with. So I'm using the length function LEN. If the length of A4 is equal to 1, then I'm going to pack it with four leading zeros and the original test. Else, I need another if. If length A4 is equal to 2, then I need to pack it with three leading zeros and the original test in A4. Another if, okay, if the length of A4 is equal to three, that means we want to pack it with two leading zeros and the original test in A4. And so on and so forth, we need to combine the next if statement like this. Let me complete it. If length of A4 is equal to 4, four then I want to pack it with one zero in the original test in A4. The final one is what do we want if it is anything else? Then I want to trim the value in A4. Why I'm using trim? Because I want to make sure the test will be returned as a test, not number. So now this is how we are going to close the formula with the corresponding number of closing parentheses. This is not easy to construct at all. See, look at this formula. Let me try to copy it down, but it works. However, 
what if I change my mind later? I want to change it to seven. Oops, it didn't work. Because one of the major drawback of using nested if approach is the difficulty to modify the formula. If I need to modify the formula, I have to add additional nested if in the equations. This is super difficult, I would say. That's why we have another approach. Okay, now let's try a new function switch. So first we need to define the expansion that we want, which is the length of the test in A4. Okay. When I construct a switch formula, I would suggest we put every condition in a separate line by passing alternate enter to start a new line in the formula. Okay, we want to tell Excel the switch function. When the expression returned one as a result, comma, what do, you, what do we want when it returned one? Well, when it returned one, I want to pack it with four zeros and the original data in A4, comma, next line, alternate enter. When it returned a result of two, I want to pack it with three zeros and the value in A4, comma. When it returned a result of three, this is what I want. You can see this is very logical and straightforward, right? When it returned a result of four, then I want to pair it with one leading zeros. When it is five, then what it is? I want to trim the value in A4. Okay, to pay safe, I want to have something else. What it is? I would like to say when something other than one to five, then this is out of range. Closing parenthesis, enter. Cool, this is our result. Let's see if I want to copy it down. It is super easy, super easy. And it works. So what if we want to change to the space seven letters instead of five? Think about the situation for the last if. We need to add two more last if condition at the end of the equation. But using switch, it will be relatively easy. Why it is relatively easy? Because we can add it at the end on the six and seven. We can add two condition here. So this is six and then we have seven. Okay, but we need to also revise this. We have to add two more zero here. And then I need to put this trimmed to seven. And then this one, when I have five, I need to do it two. And then for this one, I can do it with one. Although I said it is relatively easy, it is not indeed, right? You see that I missed one comma here. That's why I got a message of error. Now it works. But this is not dynamic. Indeed, there is another way to do it in a more dynamic way. This is what I'm going to show you in the next two approaches. Okay, let me change this from seven back to five and pay attention to the three different approaches we did before. When I change it to five, the approach using test will be dynamic. However, it didn't work for test value. The nested if and the switch they were status. They are not responding to what I input here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a great 
example of using NAT, which is a super great function, appear in Excel 365. Let's do it. Equal NAT, open parentheses, and then similar to what we did for switch, I would suggest we start a new line when we, whenever we have a new variables. Think about this as, as simple as NAT x b1 y b2 and then return x plus y 3 as a result. But we will do it in a meaningful way with our example here. So NAT n be the length of the test we are doing with. So we have n and then we have an expression of length a4 here, called parentheses. Okay, so I need to define the second variables, alternate enter to start a new line. I want to name the variable as target. My target will be the value in H1. Okay, and I want to make it absolute because I want to copy the formula down afterward. Comma, start a new line. So now we have two variables. The first one and B the length of the content of A4. The second variable, target, is the number we store in the cell H1. So there is a gap, right? So the gap is the difference between the target and the length. So what we have is the gap here. I define another variable called gap. What it is, it will be equal to target minus n comma, okay, alternate enter to start another new line. The next step will be to determine the number of zeros that we need. So I call the both variables as the pad, comma, and then what we want is indeed I want the repeat functions. What do I want to repeat? I want to repeat zero. And how many times I want to repeat depends on the gap we have here. Okay, comma. So now we have all the ingredients. The final result that we want to return is pad and the value in A4. Close parentheses. And let's see what we have. Bingo! This is what we have. We have a length of six letters here. When I copy that, everything fit to a length of six. What if I change the parameter here? Change it to five. Perfect, How about nine. Perfect, totally dynamic here, responsive to what we input as a parameter of the length. This is super cool. Let's review the formula again. So net and be the length of the test we have, net target be the value we input in H1, then we can identify the gap, we define the variables gap as target minus n, then we define another variable called pad, P -A -D, which is defined as the number of zeros that was defined as the gap here, and then finally we pair the result. Super logical, super easy to read. So far, that function is promising. However, we do not all have Excel 365. Let's see how we can do it with the basic function in a dynamic way. Okay, we will start with a very simple situation. We think about we have five zeros. I just want to pad five zeros to the test here. So this is the super straightforward formula. Enter. So we have, oh, six letters here. When we have more, when we have two letters in the original input, then I will have a length of seven. For this one, I have a length of eight. This is not what we want, but we can do it with a simple trick. What we want is only the five letters starting from the right, right? So 
I am using the right function, and then I just care about the five letters in the right. As simple as that. Assuming we want the fixed length of five, this is the formula that we need. Super easy, super straightforward. So the next question is how do I make it responsive to the input in H1? Easy. I change this five into H1 and I make it absolute because I'm going to copy the formula then. Also, I want to change this portion to be dynamic. So how can I make it dynamic? I also use the repeat function. Okay, so what I want to repeat, I want to repeat zero. How many times? Depends on the parameter in H1. So I reference it to H1. Also make it absolute. Enter. And then now I'm going to copy it down. Look at this. When I change the number of the parameter here, perfect. It works exactly the same as what we did for net. What we have here is just some basic function. Write, wrap, repeat, and that's it. I just need two basic functions that is available in all versions of Excel. And we can achieve this in a dynamic way. Cool. I hope you enjoyed this video.